So this is our first episode. Let's take the turn to do a self-introduction to our audience. My name is Daniel Gu. In September 2012, I had a brainstem stroke. And before that, I was the CIO of the East West Bank. I never thought stroke could happen to me. I was active, without diabetes, no high blood pressure, no heart problem. Since the stroke, I learned a tremendous about the great community that is now fighting to triumph over the injury. And I was very lucky to be introduced to Alison Shapiro. And our journey started when Alison started coaching. I learned so much. It's a great pleasure to be with everybody. Thank you, Daniel. My name is Allison Shapiro. I had two brain stem strokes 24 hours apart, more than 13 and a half years ago. I was profoundly injured and I've made a really good recovery. And 10 years ago, I realized that I wanted to teach. I wanted to teach people something about what I had learned that would help them work with their own recoveries. So I began to teach, and it's such a privilege to work with other stroke survivors, such a privilege to work with family members and do whatever I can to make some small difference in what happens next for them. In that process, I met my amazing friend, Rita Martin. I'm Rita Martin. I had a stroke 19 and a half years ago on June 4th. 1996 in Tibet. When I had the stroke, I didn't have a voice and I didn't have this hand. And I came out of it and I said, and they said, we think you're having a stroke. And I went back into it. So I had two strokes on that day. I was fit. I was an occupant. So I got down to um, Syracuse, New York in about uh, three weeks. The doctors didn't think that I would walk again or talk. I'm walking a bunch now uh, and talk. Uh, I'm still doing um, acupuncture. I do acutonics. I'm a really good cook and um, uh, really good at some other things. And I'd also like to introduce another very dear friend of mine. This is Sue Lestalish. Sue and I met some years ago in an intense training, bringing mindfulness to great hardship and difficulty. I do it with stroke survivors. Sue does it in work with hospice. And we have become very good friends because we share this concern for how do you meet hard times? So, Sue. So, I've been a registered nurse for almost 40 years. And it was back in the mid-90s that I started to study holistic nursing. And it opened a whole other world to me. And one of the things that I recognize, and I've spent several uh, decades studying, is things outside of conventional medicine and integrative medicine. And I've taught um, and I have worked in a number of areas of, of medicine. And when I taught or when I spoke with somebody individually, I would bring the piece of my holistic knowledge is that as human beings, it's our individual right and responsibility to take care of ourselves and to be a part of our own healing solution. And I've always felt that the possibilities are wide open. But it wasn't until I met Allison that I really came to understand exactly what that meant. And it has been my, <laughs> my immense honor and privilege um, to have met her and Rita and to see just how wide open the possibility into healing is. And that when we bring ourselves to it, and we share our knowledge and our support with each other, it's limitless. And that is a perfect introduction to Alison, your book, Healing to Possibility. 
And that book has changed many people's lives, including mine. And I remember when I first watched the video of you, my wife and I were in tears. It came in the darkest moment of our life. That is how I got to know your book. Could you tell us what led you to write that book? Thank you, Daniel. When I began to teach, I began to realize how many stories I had to tell. And the teaching was what was most important to me. I didn't realize that the teaching actually made itself into a book. I had a good friend who was a publisher. She kept encouraging me to write. And finally, finally I was inspired to start to write it. The purpose of the book is to share with people how they can help themselves. As Sue said, find the resources within themselves to help them work with their strokes because we have that capacity. And that's why I wrote it. Alison, could you tell us how is stroke recovery different from other injuries? Stroke is a brain injury. Brain injuries like traumatic brain injuries, brain injuries that result from disease like tumors mm. or stroke, all affect the central nervous system, affect the brain. And the healing from any kind of brain injury is the most participatory kind of healing I have ever seen. Everything we do matters. Every single little motion, attitude, intention, everything we do matters. We can have such a powerful effect on our own well-being if we begin to understand this and begin to learn how to work with ourselves. That's why brain injury is different. Alison, what are the things only survivors know about the stroke recovery not found anywhere else? That's a wonderful question, Daniel. It's a wonderful question because healing from a stroke or any other brain injury is an inside job. The real information is here. It's not out there. I've been taught most of my life, as most people have, to listen to what's out there and not to listen to what is in here. But healing from a brain injury is so subtle. All these little things need to be done. The brain has to rewire itself to work itself around the damage. And only we survivors can really feel and work with those subtle little changes and bring them to their conclusion. The doctors and the therapists help tremendously. They're wonderful resources. But in the end, it's what we know and what we learn to pay attention to in ourselves and what we believe and how we choose to work that will make the biggest difference. So Alison, what is the best way to get your book? The best way to get my book is to go to my website. My website is www.healingintopossibility.com. Singular, not possibilities, but one possibility, healingintopossibility.com. And there's an easy way to get to Amazon and order the book. You can order it in many other bookstores or online resources, but the fastest way is to go to the website. And the website has other resources that might be beneficial. And Sue, so, if you are going to introduce the book, recommend it to your patients. Mm -hmm. What is the reason you want to emphasize so that they will read the book? So I think that like, your stories are very powerful. Um, you know, so much has, has happened for people just by telling their stories and for people listening to their stories. And so um, I think, first of all, like, you know, it just, it lets you, it gives you a glimpse of, of what exactly is possible. And um, it's just so supportive and so encouraging. And, um, you know, I think that it's a fabulous place to, to start 
So to, to give somebody um, the potential or the, the, um, the advantage of understanding and, and really feeling for the first time that me too, just like me, just like me. And, um, and that, you know, that kind of connection, that kind of rec uh, recognition, like Rita and, uh, and Allison have been talking about is, um, you know, is very powerful. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Thank you. So for everybody watching this podcast, I would strongly recommend you get a copy of Healing to Possibility.